Hi everyone, my name is Holly and I'm a food scientist. I've been a member of the Institute of Food Science and Technology since the beginning of my degree and my love of food science came from being a food tech student just like you. Getting a question is a challenge but it's an exciting start to a project. Imagine being given a broad topic for a question. How would you approach this? I would highlight and underline key words. What ingredients are you being asked about? How do they work? What are their functional properties? Analyse the question and make clear objectives. Remember, if your topic is broad, you may be asked about multiple questions. Use credible sources of information. Don't just rely on the internet. And make a plan. Remember, if you plan now, you save time later. A real-life example that I was faced with was reducing the fat content of a chocolate bar. The way I went about doing this was contacting suppliers as well as looking at previous research that companies had done. So for example, if I was going to look at this chocolate bar, I would look at the chocolate factor, the peanut butter slurry, as well as the nougat. So what is a hypothesis? It's a statement which expresses what you think is going to happen. It's an intelligent guess. Here I have three samples of scones. One's with plain flour, and these two are with raising agents in. So you would expect that this one wouldn't rise. What experiments can you then set up to prove this? And what could go wrong? You've got to think about what resources you need and how to prevent things from going wrong. Research relevant information and go on a fact-finding mission. What are you trying to find out about the ingredients? For example, if you're working with raising agents, there are three different types. We have biological, chemical, and mechanical. So an example of a biological raising agent is yeast, and here we have different types. In these bottles, we have yeast and sugar, of varying quantities. This is because yeast metabolizes sugar and then produces carbon dioxide. So here you can see that this one's produced the biggest balloon bubble, and this is because this has the most sugar in. Yeast is used in things like breads. Another raising agent is chemical. Here we have baking powder and cream of tartar. When we add them together, they fizz. This is because of carbon dioxide formation, and these are added into products like scones. Another raising agent is mechanical. This is where you physically add air into the product. This is used in products such as cakes. One good way to get started is to look at other investigations that people have done on this topic. You can look them up in school textbooks, watch videos, talk to experts, or read food science websites. For example, in investigations on starches, you could observe them thickening sources with different amounts or thickening sources with different types of starch. Thickening might also be affected by acid. So what did these investigations show and how did they set up the experiment? Ensure you make a science link. What is happening at the molecular level in terms of chemical properties? Gather all possible information and this will help you to write the hypothesis. So here are my top tips for planning your research. Analyse the question, see what others have done, use credible sources of information, Plan everything and take notes and predict your outcomes. Remember, this is your hypothesis, but this does not have to always be correct. In the next video, we'll be conducting experiments and looking into our investigations.